Uh, Harvey Park back here on the program is going to be fighting for the LFA interim lightweight title against Demarcus Jackson at LFA 64 in the main event on April 26. Harvey, how are you, man? Good, man. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's good to catch up with you again. Uh, you've been on quite the roll lately, so it's good to see you get this title fight here. And uh, I'm sure it had to do with your last fight. What a win that was over Jaleel Willis, a really tough prospect. Uh, you went out there and got the uh, got the TKO win. Uh, was that the biggest uh, win in your career, in your opinion? And were you happy with your performance? Um, yeah, I think it was. I'm, I'm happy, you know. Uh, it's just, It was kind of a strange fight. I wish it was, you know, when they go fast, they kind of, it feels like you didn't even fight, you know. So I wish it the two before that were six rounds with LFA. So, you know, you really get a, a, a good rub. You feel like you had a good fight. And, you know, that one, it, it just feels different. Okay. So you were hoping to show a little bit more in the cage is what you're yeah, saying. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. But, I mean, but I, nonetheless, I, 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 did, did you expect the fight to go that quickly? Because Jaleel's a really tough guy. Um, I didn't know what to expect. I knew that I expected to be an ugly fight if he could if he could really wrestle me. But, um once I, I started to really give him problems wrestling, I was, uh, I thought it might go quick because if he, if he, I, I always said if you couldn't if you couldn't really hold me against the cage or put me on my back, it was gonna get bad. And uh, you know, stepped a few takedowns, got off the cage a couple times, and you know, it went the way it did. It certainly did. What was the feedback like after that win? Because there, there was a lot of uh, it looked like eyeballs on this fight or on that fight, I should say. And uh, you know, people were talking about you after the fight for sure. Oh, uh, it's good. Um, Every time I fight for LFA, is lots of feedback. You know, uh, the bigger uh, the bigger promotions, you get more feedback, so more eyeballs, and uh, you know, it was mostly good. Every uh, lots of people, lots of social media blowing up, things like that. Were you expecting a title fight next? I mean, your record certainly warrants it, but you never know with uh, you know fighting uh, you know anywhere really. Uh, nothing's guaranteed. I was man. I uh, did a few interviews, and I was saying, you know, well, I I, I was expecting to fight Hubbard, but. Um, I think he have he might have something in the works that isn't out yet, but uh, I was expecting to fight him, or and I was hoping that I'd get a shot at like contender series or some short notice fight or something like that. But I was expecting a title shot at the least. Yeah, and and I think one of the cool things, I mean, you reference contender series there. The problem with contender series is you you got to compete with four other fights on the card. With LFA, not only is this a title fight, but you're the main event, so all the yeah. eyeballs are on you. Do you feel like That's in some cool. ways this is a better situation than contender series? Yeah, it's um, I like it though. I want I want the belt. I, I, I six years ago I was messaging LFA. Let me touch with the belt. So, you know, it's it's been a long grind, but um, I like I like the title shot. I like I like taking home a belt. Um, so you know, LFA's I'm happy with it. And you're taking on a really tough opponent here in Demarcus Jackson. And we've heard nothing but great things out of Hard Knocks. Uh, just a tough prospect, ten and two record. How do you feel like you match up against him here? Uh, I feel like I match up good. Um, you know, looking at him, doing a little scouting, I think he's going to, you know, he's he's a good wrestler, but I think he's got big power. And, uh, it, you know, it might be a little different than Jaleel. It might be a little bit the same fight. Uh, fought a lot of guys that are going to want to wrestle and put it on the ground, but I think he has a little bit more power than anyone I've ever fought. So, you know, it's exciting. It's someone that could really test me, so I'm looking forward to it. Do you normally watch tape on your opponents? Because I know for some fighters, they just let their coaches do that. But it seems like you're, you know, sort of a fan and, and student yourself. You want to kind of see what's going on with your opponents. Um, I don't I do not do too much of the game plan or scouting. But I, the thing is, uh, I guess the higher level you get, I've just seen him fight before without having, before we even matched up, I had seen his fights. So um, I don't do too much in the, watching tape. I let my coach Eric Swan and Nick Urso, they watch a lot of tape for me. And they'll uh, structure game plan and techniques around it. You mentioned your coaches there. What about training partners? Who are some of the guys that are helping you get ready for this fight? Uh, I try, so spend a, spend most of the weekend Clovis, and then I'll make some trips up to Albuquerque. Uh, Clovis, you know, I got like my my jujitsu coach Seth High for it. Uh, another pro in Nico Nathan, boxer Rico Arquizo. Um, go down to Albuquerque. I'll get in Albuquerque. Uh, it's it's different. It's it's you 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 don't know who you're going to train with. Some days. I'll be wrong with Lando Venata. Some days, um, you know, I'll be wrong with Ray Borg. Uh, just you don't know who's going to be in the gym. One day I was wrong with Joe Schilling. So uh, that's the good thing about Albuquerque. You don't know it, and it's such a world class fight town that you don't know who's going to walk in the gym. Right, and and from what I hear, because I've talked to Lando, uh, so you're part of like the old uh, Jackson's gym, because there's like the new gym, which is like you know a lot of the fighters went there, and then there's like you know yeah. Lando, and I think Cowboy Cerrone's a little bit there too. Like like the just it's sort of separate at this point. Yeah, I, uh, it's on Acoma in Albuquerque, Jackson's Acoma. 
and uh, I go there. My my manager uh, invited me there, and I go there, and I'll train with Nick. He's the head coach there, and he uh, he's helped me out a lot with techniques and whatnot. So um, there's a lot of a lot of really high level guys in there. And Nick's just a great guy too, uh, you know, as oh, far yeah. as uh, as far as everything. And I know his Facebook posts get him in trouble, but I enjoy them. I like them because he speaks <laughs> his mind, so that's always yeah. good too. Very entertaining. Exactly. Um, now this fight's like a month away. Uh, when does the weight cut start? Because obviously you got to hit uh, you know 155 on the dot for this fight being a title fight. Yeah, um, it'll start. I mean, it started, you know, but right now I'm just losing weight. I'm not losing. So I mean, I'll start losing. I'll, I'll get down to my mark, and then Sunday I'll start the water cut. But right now I'm just eating healthy working out, getting down to what I want my mass, what my oh, my weight to be before I start anything. Okay, that sounds good. And uh, I know it's early, but uh, who, who do you think is going to be in your corner for this fight? Um, I don't know how many they're going to give us. I, I don't know. I haven't fought in South Dakota much, so I don't know if they're going to do three or four. If they do three, I'm thinking it'd be Nick or so, my boxing coach, Jose Lopez, and uh, my head coach, Eric Swan. If they do four... Um, I don't know who that fourth one will be. I'm sure somebody will want to be in there, though. Right. Yeah, big fight like this. Um, and, and how do you see this fight unfolding? Are we going to see another finish in this fight on April 26th? Yeah, I, I'm looking for the finish. Uh, I see a lot, just like the last fight, we're going to uh, wrestling, cage work. But um, I think there'll be a, a little bit more stand-up, a little bit more uh, of rhythm sliding into the pocket and uh, going with it. Jalil kind of... Uh, does like more of like a rush style where he rushes into you to close the distance. I think uh, me and Marquise will kind of get in the pocket and uh, throw throw some uh, some punches and some kicks. And not looking and, past Jackson in this fight, but I imagine after this, it's either a title fight, a unification fight, I would say with Hubbard or the UFC. Because I would think at this point you'd probably want to bypass contender series because I would think an LFA title sort of holds more weight than a contender series fight. Yeah, um, you know the UFC is the big ticket. Well, I'm. Um, uh, in no place, you know, to say this or that, but I'll take, I, I would love to go right to the, to the big show, uh, jump on the card. Uh, if I gotta, if I gotta work my way up, which I've always had to, uh, you know, I'll do that. If I gotta go to the contender series, I'll, I'll do that. If, if this, you know, if I got offered something, I'd take that. And then, you know, if not, I'll just keep, keep taking the, I'll just take the next fights they give me. And, uh, hopefully it's something big. And if not, we'll just keep grinding. Just, you know, hypothetically, how, how do you feel like you would match up against Hubbard if you guys ever did fight? Because, uh, like you said, you watched his title fight against uh, Mata. You know, I, I felt like we matched up good. We've we've already had one fight, and, uh, you know, I thought I won two rounds. Judges thought it was the other way. No big deal. But I did, you know, I had some issues with cardio. So uh, he, re he really gave it to me that third round. And, you know, um, I think we could – it would be different if we fought again. Uh, a bigger gas tank, hopefully. Okay. And uh, before I let you go, what is downtime looking like during training camp? I know you're a busy guy. you got a lot going on. But uh, getting in any uh, Netflix or movies or video uh, games or anything like that? You know, uh, I, I, I watch a little bit. Uh, I like live sports. That's about. And then uh, I got my shows. I, same as always. I just watch them over and over. Um, downtime, you know, I'm doing a lot of recipes. I always got to cook my own food. So... Uh, looking up healthy stuff and uh, just spending time with the kids, really. Okay. What, uh, like, a lot of people are, like, on the keto thing or paleo. What, 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 how do you sort of eat during camp? You know, I didn't know what it was called. So, like, I don't even know if they have a name for it, but it's, like, low glycemic. So just complex carbs and then, um, you know, my fats and proteins. I'm not as worried about them. I'm just worried about, you know, not eating, re eating any refined sugar and not eating any, uh, any simple carbs. And, and that really works for me. Yeah. Um, you mentioned live sports. What do, you, what do you like watching outside of MMA? Or is it just Ooh, MMA? Uh, I like MMA. Uh, I like basketball, uh, boxing. I, I grew up as a team sports, man, basketball, football. So, like, I, I like them all. And I was watching wrestling all weekend. So, like, I'll, you know, all of it. Now, when you say basketball, are you watching the NCAA tournament or is it just the NBA? Ooh, you know, um, uh, people people might hate it, but I'm more of an NBA guy, dude. I like the individuals and like uh, the best players in the world. So you know, I and uh, I'm, I I love Steph Curry. Like I I watch I watch any Warriors game, you know. And uh, people say bandwagon or whatever, but like dude, he changed the game, you know. And he's not this freak athlete that's jumping out of the gym. He's you know. And people say shooting is uh, as much a gift as 
you know, being fast or strong. I think it's more hard work than, than yeah. Than how many how many times is this guy on the you know in the court at night probably you know when he could be out hanging out with his friends and he's shooting threes, he's exactly. trying to get better at it, right? That's that's why he's like a video game character now because he's sort yeah, of perfected exactly. it. I mean, he's been privileged. You know, his dad was one of the best shooters ever, so he's been like in this environment to you know make him probably this amazing shooter but to me it's as it's as much hard work as anything yeah so and uh, your hard work has certainly paid off rv a big fight here april 26th it is lfa 64 you can watch it live on access tv i uh, just remind people where they can find you on social media and if you have any sponsors or shout outs the floor is yours man uh social media is easy they're all harvey park mma facebook twitter instagram uh most active on instagram if you you'll get a hold of me if you message instagram the other two you might get a moderator or something uh, uh the gems four swine clovis new mexico jackson's on acoma and albuquerque um find me at either one of those uh sponsors we usually just a little bit too early to get it all signed up we're still working on it but if, if you want to sponsor just message me on uh um any, any of those uh, social medias and you'll get a hold of someone, like I said, Instagram will be me. Um, you know, big shout out to the Kirk County Sheriff's Office. They, you know, uh, they let me do this uh, besides just being a deputy sheriff. So um, really appreciate them and uh, my coach, uh, Eric Swan, Jose Lopez and uh, Ricky, Ricky Cottonsteady, Nick, Nick Urso. Big shout out to all of them.